Hey guys, welcome back. So this is a 2000 John Deere 425 and this is essentially my dream garden tractor. I'd also like the uh, 455 which is the diesel model of this. So I just picked this up on Marketplace. I ended up paying a, a lot of money for it. I paid $2,300 thinking that it didn't have any issues with it. So this machine is in pretty mint condition. It only has 425 hours it runs good kind of i'll get to that issue here in a minute so it comes with a hydraulic pto system hydraulic deck up and down hydraulic steering so it comes equipped with auxiliary hydraulic hookups right here you can install a front end loader or a snow blower so another thing that i thought was pretty cool is it has this differential lock uh, pedal that you press down if you want to lock the rear end it also comes with cruise control tilt steering wheel here's your hydraulic levers right here it also comes with your kawasaki twin cylinder engine 20 horsepower and overall this machine is in really good shape the guy that i bought this from said that he said he never pressure washed it or cleaned it with any kind of water he always just used a uh, blower and blew off the grass and that was it so one cool thing about this machine is these covers come right off and you can access the engine pretty easily so let's go ahead and check some of the basics on this got our coolant here which looks absolutely brand new very clean let's uh check the oil on it so it's got oil and the oil looks like brand new so as i was loading this uh tractor onto the trailer i noticed that the oil light came on i didn't think much of it i even told the guy about it and he's like oh it's probably just low on oil so let me show you what it's doing right up so at a little bit higher of rpm the oil light stays off but once i go down on the rpm it turns on and also it will start to flicker well usually it flickers and uh, it goes off everything else on this machine works great the power steering it's got a hydrostatic transmission so it, it kind of bothered me when i saw that oil light come on I do know before 1998 these engines had a plastic cam gear but they also have a plastic oil pump gear and a plastic governor gear so those are weak points on this engine So the guy did throw in a couple things with the purchase, threw in all these straps and some oil, all these locks. But another cool thing is he threw in this uh, lawnmower or four-wheeler lift. I think it's pretty cool. Just pump this up and raises the machine up. All right, let's go ahead and get some of these covers taken off. So one issue that it could be is this oil pressure sensor right there. So I went ahead and uh, made this oil pressure test port gauge. I didn't have the right fitting so I braised this together. Let's go ahead and hook this on the engine and got a gauge right here. All right, we are all hooked up here. Let's go ahead and crank it up and see what we got. Yeah, we should be at like 60 PSI right now. Now the oil light's on, as you can see. And we're dropping down. Bring it down to idle here. Yeah, we're 
like we're at like 10 psi that's not good all right yeah that, that's not good so it's really not making much sense if the oil gear was stripped out then i'd have zero oil pressure and i'm getting like 18 to 20 max at full throttle all right let's go ahead and take this uh oil filter off and see if we see any oil coming out of there Gosh, that was barely on there doesn't look terrible but maybe the filter is just clogged all right i'm gonna go ahead and just cut this oil filter open here see what it looks like That filter looks perfect. So even with the low oil pressure, I don't think I have any kind of like bad rod bearings or anything like that. I'm not seeing any metal in here. Really happy about that. Let's see this battery out here. Alright, so I got my drain bolt right here, and it doesn't have a magnet on it, so I just took a little magnet and broke it up in little pieces, and ground it down into like a little circular one. I'm going to drill a hole in this and uh, epoxy it in, that way if any metal shavings do come from the engine, they'll get caught on that magnet, and I can remove them each time I drain the oil. And I'll just epoxy that little magnet in there, and we'll be good to go. magnet on there now. All right, let's get this coolant drained. This is our water pump here.
here is our case cover so first glances i am not seeing anything wrong this is the oil pump gear right here it looks like metal but it's actually plastic here's your governor and this is also made out of plastic everything looks really clean the crankshaft journals look perfect i don't see any scoring in there the bottom of the pan here really clean all right let's go ahead and get this oil pump out of here all right so everything's looking pretty good on that here's our oil pump <coughs> rotor gear oh that looks perfect there's no uh wear on that this looks absolutely perfect. Oops. Let's go ahead and take this cover off and see what we find behind it. I believe there's a filter behind this cover. This is our filter and it looks spotless. So I am completely baffled why we had such low oil pressure. All right, so I went ahead and picked up some new parts. Here is a steel oil pump gear. This is gonna replace this plastic gear. And also got a new water pump here, a new governor gear, and a whole gasket kit. Some new O-rings here. All right, so I'm pretty sure I just found the issue. If you look right here at this spring, the spring should actually be a little bit proud above this case, and right now it's sitting below it. What that's doing is whenever it builds up pressure, it's going to lift up on the spring about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. So that was allowing the oil to bypass around it. And when you revved it up, it had a lot more pressure, so it, it was able to build up just enough to turn the light off. So I've read online of numerous people actually having this issue and it destroying their engines. So I don't know what causes this. I don't know if it's like just the pressure pushes the ball into the case and wears it out just a little bit. All right, so I stretched the spring out slightly. Now you can see that it sits just slightly proud above the case here. And that's what you want. So when I put the cover on here, it's gonna push it down just enough to keep it closed. So now the oil leaks past the uh, relief valve. Alrighty, let's go ahead and start getting this oil pump put back together. Got some assembly lube here. All right, we got our steel oil pump gear here. Okay. 
So this gear has to be pressed on here. Gives us a shot here. All right, I'm just going to use a very small amount of Loctite 515. Here is a new water pump. Let's get this dipstick installed here. All right, perfect. Okay, guys, we got it mostly buttoned back up and put back together besides the body panels. Let's go ahead and crank it up and see what kind of oil pressure we get. All right, we are right at about 60 psi and a little bit over idle. Yeah, 
we're looking good. Let's drive it around a little bit and see if it changes. Looks like we're good. Let's get this thing put back together. Right, that is a good bit cleaner. Let's go ahead and get the covers on. is running great I don't have any oil light coming on everything's working good no noises super smooth machine what do you think bud? so one thing I really don't kind of like about this machine is this reverse lever here and it's just kind of too small you know especially if you got like big boots on it's kind of hard to push so i picked up this little aftermarket reverse lever here so let's get that installed so one little trick to get this thing out is to pull up on the accelerator pedal and now this thing will pull down and you can slide it right off and your new one just goes on the same way. Just gonna line it up so it doesn't rub. Let me tighten them down.
So when I purchased this machine, the original owner, he couldn't find the um, original gauge wheels for this uh, deck here. So he just gave me some off of like a beat up motor he had. So I went ahead and picked up some new ones. And they really weren't that bad either. They're only about 60 bucks for all four. So I really like these gauge wheels that John Deere makes on this mower. They actually have a seal around them. And this goes in here and it um, that seal goes around it. And then you can pump in grease. So it literally holds the grease in here. You know, that way they don't wear out. And they also have this nice like kind of plastic. Tighten it down and everything. That should be good there. Oh yeah, that is super smooth. Now you want to make sure you keep your caps, because the kit doesn't come with new ones. I'm gonna get those. Uh, So there is one other thing that I want to install on this machine, and that's some new headlights and taillights. As you can see, the headlights aren't that bright and the taillights aren't that bright either. So let's go ahead and uh, get some new ones installed. So I got these LED bulbs. Got them from a company called Utica Kim. He actually sent me a free spare one, so that was nice of him. Let's go ahead and get these installed and see uh, see if they're any better. All right, these are pretty easy to install. Just go like that and get back in the housing. All right, let's see what they look like. Oh wow, those are so much brighter. So are the tail lights. Wow, good lord, those things are three times, ten times as bright as the other ones. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with these. good friend's house. I'm gonna help him out cutting his grass. He's pretty old and even maybe a little disabled so he's getting to be almost 90 years old so I'm gonna help him out cutting his grass for free and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes. We'll give the John Deere a good little test. This grass is uh, definitely pretty high as you can see. It is yeah. So anyway let's go ahead and uh, get started. Just Stuff in the yard I probably need to watch out for, but I'll be right back.
his wool bill is what is about that big. <laughs> He said, I ordered big watermelons and they give me these things. <laughs> they had big old seed in them, Daryl. Yeah. But it was little, little bitty watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to go around with the weed eater now and uh, see this how... This here don't really need it over here. I usually cut it one time over here and let him cut it one time. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna test out this little, this little weed eater here. Actually sent me this for free. Told me to give it a try. It's called a Wild Badger. Anyway, these things run like 70 bucks, so it's pretty cheap. But um, yeah, let's give this thing a shot, see how it works. It's got this uh, like circular saw blade on here. Let's crank it up, see what this thing can do. say it does pretty good I went ahead and put the string on it see how it does this thing actually does crank pretty easy <laughs> Well, Charles, I'm glad I could help you out. And I'm glad you come over, Charles. And cut your grass here. Looks a little bit better. Lawnmower did good.